thank you so much brethren and indeed it's a beautiful day that the lord has made and we rejoice and be glad we bless him and we worship him you know i just looked at the at, at the at the at the participants or what you say and they realized we are all women and something struck to me say yes indeed when jesus died all the men went back to fishing they went back to do their things but it was only the women who were still going on to the grave to see jesus and they were the first um, they were the first uh, holders of the new uh, of the new, new uh, of the resurrection power so do not uh, do not um, um um do not feel like um how do i say it do not get tired of doing good do not get tired of coming to prayer do not get tired because the lord is faithful who is going to reward you there is a resurrection power is uh, working for us the resurrection power is the one that is rolling away the stone for us so be encouraged this morning and understand that even when jesus died all the men they went back to fishing all the peter peter had been told by jesus will you take care of the church will you take care of the church and he had said yes but when jesus died he told like all that was being spoken was just dreams now he's back to reality and he went back fishing but the women even though they knew that there was someone who would they don't ha- they didn't have anyone to roll away the stone for them their hearts were still burning for Jesus just as our, as our hearts are burning for him today this morning and you know what they were rewarded instantly when they went there they were the first ones to be told go and tell them to meet me at Galilee so the same Jesus is here today giving you the good news for today telling you as he has said in Psalms 143 verse 8 cause me to hear thy love and kindness in the morning for in thee do i trust cause me to know the way where in i should walk for i lift up my soul unto you let's continue lifting up our soul unto him to transform us let's continue desiring to hear his love and kindness this morning and every day in the morning for our trust is only in him cause to know him is to know the way that we should walk hallelujah we say thank you for the word i want us today i just want to do a small teaching actually it's basically a teaching on the book of matthew but i want us to to look at the genealogy of jesus christ on the book of matthew so i was just looking at it and i said okay and uh, from uh, chapter 1 to chapter which is from um, chapter 1 verse 1 to actually verse 16 or 17 yeah but i will just pick from a uh, part of it and um i want us to look at the genealogy of jesus christ the book of matthew and the book of luke they all have genealogies of jesus christ but they are very different very different one may stop wondering how comes the book of matthew is different and the book of luke is different and they are all genealogies of jesus christ we should understand that the book of matthew is the genealogy of the called ones the genealogy of the, of the kingdom and the chosen one in christ jesus while the genealogy in the book of Ma- of, of luke is on the genealogy of salvation so these are two is the same jesus christ is on the book of mark brought in as a king and in the book of luke is brought in as a savior so we have different perspective of jesus christ so i want us to look at the book of um, matthew it says the book of generation of jesus christ the son of david the son of abraham see the son of david why because it is bringing out the, uh, the christ as a king because he was the king after the, the 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 throne of the throne of David and the son of Abraham you see the son of Abraham and the son of David why specifically the son of Abraham because this Abraham was the chosen one Abraham was called it was not from the Adamic race 
from the created dress but it was from the rest of the cold ones those who are cold so you see when um when god was dealing with man from genesis god was dealing with man based on the creation rest like the rest that was created from adam to noah uh, to adam said all of those who god had created how however after the tower of babel god looked at man and he even repented for creating man so the other option that god the other solution or option i can call it that god had was to start calling out from the adamic rest because now dealing with all the created beings man is not easy to deal with man so he decided to call from the adamic uh, from from uh, from the uh, adamic rest he started calling people so he called the first one to call was abraham so we see that god called abraham and uh, abraham decided to to follow the call and from abraham we see that we got a new rest now this is the king's rest the rest of the kingdom the rest of the chosen ones so after abraham was called in in genesis we see that abraham was called when he was uh, already in chaldean with the father but however in act 7 two and three we see that abraham was called when he was still in mesopotamia so when he was still in fact when his father said that they have to move to chaldean it is because god had already called abraham but as as the jew culture at that time you as a child cannot initiate something it is the father who was supposed to initiate even if it is a movement so i looking at it when abraham according to acts abraham was called even before he moved to his father so abraham was called in mesopotamia but i think with the discussion with the father it was the father who decided to move so they moved with the father they moved with lord and the, and, and and the wife and um, to where to chaldean but when they go to chaldean something happened Abraham's father died. Abraham's father died. So sometimes there are things that when God called us, calls us, there are things that in fact Abraham was told to go out of the father's house, you see? Abraham was told to go out of the father's house, but what did Abraham do? He moved with the father and he moved with the father's house. So it is very sensitive to hear the word of the Lord the direction at which the Lord is calling us for example God called Abraham but Abraham came along with the father what had what what, what was next you see the next Abraham's father had to die because he was not part of the plan or rather he would be the one to hinder the plan of God so we see that Abraham and now after the father died god told abraham now you come out of this area to the land that i have called you you were supposed to go to canaan you are not supposed to come and pitch a tent with your father at at the chaldean at ur so abraham at 75 again he left haran now after the dad died and went to Canaan. He took his wife and he took Lot and all the substances that the father had left at Haran. Abraham came to Canaan and he built a Bethel, the Lord's dwelling place. But the circumstances that were surrounding Abraham, understanding that God has called you to come from your father's house, he has called you to the land of Canaan and he has even told you this is Bethel. You built he built an ark, an altar at Bethel. And then what happened? Abraham comes out of the position that he was called. He came out of Bethel and what happened? Coming out of the presence of God and going back to Egypt. See, coming out of the presence of God, backsliding back again to what to Egypt. But what did God do? 
because God had called him, God fought for him. This is us as children of God. We are called, we come out of Egypt, we are come out of Babylon, we, we go to Christ, but yet sometimes circumstances of this world, the things of this world, they tempt us to go back to the world. But even when we are back to the world, God with his own jealousiness, God with his own mercies, he sends circumstances that will frustrate us, that we may come back to our father. You see, like Abraham, when he went back to Egypt, the king of Egypt was a stone in the flesh to Abraham, took Sarah. If it was not for the intervention of God because of his jealous God, and because God was preserving the sanctity, the sanctity, sanctity or sanctification or sanctity of Sarah because from Sarah was to come out a promise so God had to come down for Abraham to come down for Abraham and the one the king that you cannot leave alone this this is the wife of a prophet so you see Abraham was called back again from Egypt and he went again back to Bethel in the presence of the Lord but what did Abraham go with? He went with Lot. He went with Lot. And then they were having issues again with Lot. Until now they separated with Lot. That is when now the promises of God started to come true to him. So what, what is the small thing that we are learning here? The walk with Christ is a sensitive walk. Once we start walking with Christ, we must be very sensitive to the Spirit. There are some leadings that the Spirit will lead us. We don't need to say them because once we say them, it may be like, which kind of God is this that is separating you from the family? Which kind of God is this that is separating you from, from, from people that you love? But let me tell you one thing. God has a greater plan for you. And he's a jealous father and any hindrance any hindrance that will hinder you from the work with Christ God has to separate you from it because he is a faithful God he has called you and in his calling he is preserving you for his purpose that is why we see that even when Abraham went away with his father God had to take out his father even when Abraham went with Lord they had to find a way to separate with the Lord. So we have to separate. When God calls us, we have to separate ourselves from the things that we love. There are things that which are so dear unto us. We don't see them as a hindrance, but in the sight of God, these things are a hindrance. The things that we don't know that they, they may affect us. The things that we don't understand that these things affect us because we are so much intertwined with them. We are so much in mingleness with them that we don't realize that these things hinder us. So in our life, let us search ourselves. The things that we don't understand yet that they are hindrance. Let us pray that anything that hinders us from our work with Christ, may we separate it from, may we separate from it may we be delivered from the things that hinder us from walking to christ but yet we don't know that those things hinder us our children our parents the people that we love most they may be a hindrance to us but yet we don't understand that these things are hindering us so may god give us the grace to open our eyes that we may see that these things hinder us and we separate from them then we see that Abraham begot Isaac and Isaac begot Jacob. So Abraham begot Isaac. I just want us to look at just one thing about Isaac. As Isaac, why is Isaac mentioned in, in, in the genealogy of Christ Jesus? Because as Isaac is, so is Christ. As Isaac is a blessing to all nations, so is Christ as a blessing to all nations. As Isaac was offered to God as a type of Christ, Isaac received the bride Rebekah through Eliezer, and Eliezer is a form of the Holy Spirit. So as the 
a Christ who is the bride will also receive the church in the form of Eliezer who is the Holy Spirit that is preparing the bride who it is as the church to Christ just as Eliezer prepared the bride Eliezer adorned the bride how did uh, 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 Isaac know the bride? Isaac knew the bride through the adornment that he had those adornings were the adornings of Christ Jesus those adornings that Rebecca had they were adornings of, of Isaac that were given to Eliezer so when El uh, Rebecca was coming Isaac stood from the field and saw who and saw Christ so and saw Rebecca the wife so that is the same way Christ will know us Christ will know us because we are a reflection of him the gifts that he has given us just like the way Rebecca was adorned we are also adorned Christ through the Holy Spirit we have received Christ the perfect church the bride is adorned by the Holy Spirit made ready sanctified washed and prepared for the bride uh, it prepared for our groom Christ just as Rebecca the wife to Isaac was prepared by Eliezer the form of the Holy Spirit to who to Isaac so and also by Christ shall all nations be blessed just as by Isaac all nations all nations are blessed so Isaac Abraham begat Isaac I, Abraham the cold one now coming down uh, out of Abraham now it's Isaac and Isaac remember that Abraham got Isaac from rest Abraham did not get Isaac from his full potential there are some things that we work with our own self-righteousness they are rejected by God our own filthy righteousness why did not God uh, by inspiration Matthew say that Abraham begot Ishmael and Isaac. No, because Ishmael was rejected because he was the son of his own strength. And in Christ Jesus, we must rest. We must not produce from our own strength. We must produce from a point of rest. We must produce from a point of Christ empowerment, Christ strength. That's why it is Isaac that was acknowledged. That's why when the time of winning came, that which is no part of you has to be separated from the, the time of when Christ is developing in us through understanding and transformation. Transformation part is the kicking away of those things which are made of self-righteousness. So the Ishmael's in us have to be separated. The Ishmael's, the carnality from us have to be separated. We must be purely be formed of Isaac. Isaac and only Isaac should be remaining in us because Isaac is our transformation. Isaac is our point of rest. And then we see uh, and, and, and then we see the son of David. I want us to look at um, Jesus Christ, the son of David. Um, the son of David. Why the son of David? I say because of what? Because of the kingship. And then I will jump again until David and Jesse begat David and the king and the, and David begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Okay. I want us to look at David begat Solomon. Solomon as a type of Christ. What is Solomon as a type of Christ from? Every man in this in this genealogy represents Christ. Why Solomon as a type of Christ? One, Solomon inherited the throne of David as a son. Christ Jesus inherited the throne of God as a son. You see? Inheriting the eternal kingdom of God as a son just as solomon built the physical temple according to the perfect measure christ is also building the physical the, the spiritual of the bride according to the full perfect measure of christ jesus see the church is being built according to the perfection of what of the full of christ jesus the ephesians 4 the ephesians 4 this is the the perfect measure just as the temple solomon used the measurements of the temple our template today for the temple is the ephesians 4 bringing us together in what in the perfect unity bring us together in the structure of a perfect man that is christ jesus who is the structure of a perfect man so just as solomon 
was a type of Christ. Now Christ is the Solomon, the real Solomon is now Christ Jesus. We say greater than Solomon is here because he was working the works of bringing the what? The church of Jesus Christ unto perfection. So as Solomon was bestowed with wisdom, Christ is the wisdom himself that works out in what works out in the church. So that's why we see that so uh, Solomon, so uh, um, uh, David begat who begat Solomon through, through who, through Uriah, uh, Uriah's wife. Now I want us to look at the women. I'm cutting it short. I want us to look at the women, and uh, who are mentioned in this in this genealogy. One Tamar. Christ is not only for the Jewish customary. You see, in the book of Matthew, although Matthew knew that it was supposed to be a Jewish customary that only men should be mentioned in the genealogy, but Christ is not only for men. We see that this genealogy doesn't bring out the idea of who begat who because some people who were born in this genealogy were rejected. So it is the genealogy of those who were perfected in Christ Jesus, the genealogy of those who were called by his masses and perfected by Christ Jesus, like the women. And Jesus beget Pharisees and Zara or Tamar. Remember Tamar, how did Tamar get her uh, um, get her children tamar was looking at the birthright the same birthright that esau sold out to jacob that jacob made jacob to be part of this because isaac got jacob and yet jacob and esau were brothers but jacob i love esau were hated because of birthright the birthright in christ jesus according to the genealogy birthright is very important because birthright is our position in christ jesus that's why we see Tamar with her desire for the birthright of her child although what did she do she lured judah in a lie she lured judah but what was the desire for Tamar? the desire for Tamar was to bring forth her legal rights was to bring forth her legal birthright because in the law in according to the law if your daughter if your son died your next son had to marry them to preserve the generation so tamar was not all after pros promiscuous or not after prostitution but tamar was looking at what at the progress of jesus christ of the genealogy of jesus christ he was she was looking at the birthright so tamar slept with two slept to judah and she played the harlot but what came from it what came from it was fairies fairies and if you look at also the the the, the story for fairies fairies was supposed to be coming was supposed to be the second one but you see the first one was the first one came out and the midwife put a scarlet on the hand of the first bomb but what happened there was an intertwining so it is not our first bond or it is not our birthright according to our own works according to our own strength it is him who god has called it is him god has chosen it is not for him who runs the rest but it is him who has received what has received mercy that's why we see pharaohs who was supposed to be the second one because the first one had come out with us and, and, and the scarlet was upon him but Pharaoh came out as the first and came into the genealogy of who genealogy of christ jesus then we see another woman is rehab the harlot of jericho we all come into christ as rehabs we all come in as harlots dead in our own cultures dead in our own uh, traditions of men but what do we do when we accept christ he cleanses us he washes us and we become productive to him let us look at ruth the other woman in this genealogy was ruth and ruth um, and ruth uh, and boaz begat uh, begat obed of ruth Look at Ruth. Ruth was a mobite. In fact, the mobite were not even supposed to come close because the mobite were, were, were a generation of incense, generation of it was Lot's children that slept with with, with with the father and they brought out the generation of the mobites. But look at this. Although sometimes we come out from the generations, our family, when we look at our families, 
the histories of our families they can be very nasty they can be very bad but what happens when we come to Christ the mobile woman who is Ruth came to Christ and became so much productive in Christ Jesus washed and 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 was married to Boaz Boaz who was the king's man redeemer and redeemed Ruth and and and, and Ruth gave back to who gave back to 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 obed obed to jesse jesse to the king so we see it doesn't matter how our 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 our, our background is once we come to christ we understand that christ cleanses us christ washes us christ clean cleanses us for his own callings you cannot come to christ without a calling you cannot come to christ without producing fruits and your fruits are to abide in christ look at them uh, and uh, Ruth and, Bo- Obe- uh, and Boaz became Obed and Obed Jesse and these are the fruits that are bought in what in Christ Jesus another woman is Bathsheba Uriah's wife the ex-wife to Uriah what happened what happened to her David killed the husband why are all these women here part of this because they are to encourage us that Christ is the one who calls people Christ is the one who perfects the call so no matter what your background is today it is Christ who has called you and it is Christ who is going to perfect you do not worry but understand that whatever has to bring forth Christ it has to be sanctified whatever has to bring forth Christ it has to be washed so as Mary that's the fourth woman Mary a chaste virgin see all the women have been used as a vessel to bring jesus all these women are representative of jesus christ it doesn't matter our background but what matters is once we're in christ we are cleansed and we are and and, and, and and we are sanctified to be married so that we can surrender look at mary what when the word of god came to mary mary surrendered herself she said let it be unto me according to your word that is surrender it is only at the state of surrender that we bring forth the fruits of jesus christ so we should learn to surrender and 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 Christ Jesus come through sanctification even although though these women come from a background that is so bad a background that is nasty but understand that it is Christ who who washes you and sanctifies you that you may perfect him in his word in his calling that you may produce the fruits of who of Jesus Christ so looking at this genealogy we can see there's a called out they were carried to captive so we can be called out by Christ Jesus from our babylon but yet we can also backslide and go back to the jeconiah they backslide and went back to captivity by uh, abraham backslide and went back to egypt but yet understand that the generation of Christ included the fallen ones included the recovered ones the zerubbabels who were recovered from bondage or recover from captivity and we are called and once we fall we don't fall out of Christ Jesus we fall in the ark and we should understand that even once we understand that we are in Christ Jesus we surrender ourselves to Christ we surrender ourselves to him to take care of us and he will cleanse us and wash us by his word and perfect us to his calling so what does the gene- the genealogy of Matthew bring it brings us the mingling of god with man it b- brings out the mingling of divinity with humanity because it is from the humanity that we as human beings as abraham as Isaac as Jacob all of these they were human beings but having the mingling with divinity who was the inspiration of Christ see how they were used to produce the fruit of the spirit see how they were used to out of their shame unto glory so our work today with Christ is a work that yes we come from shame but we be God who we be God the fruit of Christ Jesus we cannot walk in shame Christ takes us out of shame it t- t- picks us in shame but he cleanses us he washes us that we may be part of him that we may be part to produce him in this kingdom so our mingling with Christ it tells us that we cannot be in shame anymore but we shall be children of God that are sanctified for the purpose of the kingdom of God 
so to they understand that you are called you are chosen for a purpose for the glory of God to manifest the glory of God and this is who you are it doesn't matter your your past it doesn't matter your history don't look at your history your life starts when you encounter Christ Jesus and it is an encounter from shame to grace it is an encounter from shame to glory so do not be ashamed of your past because this past show that the glory of God is sufficient to cleanse us and wash us and walk in the kingdom to manifest face his promises in Jesus name brethren that is just a small teaching that i wanted to to teach on today to understand these are not just names but they are representative of the genealogy of Christ Jesus so are we representative of the genealogy of Christ Jesus thank you so much for that small word may god give us grace and give us understanding in Jesus name I love you and you are blessed be blessed of the Lord and may your week be fruitful in Jesus name may Christ be made manifest in your lives may Christ be made manifest in every endeavor of yours in Jesus precious name I love you brethren back to you sister Lily thank you so much